Hello, and welcome to today's live reading of Kiss Away Your Pain by Debbie Cromack, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Prologue, Candy. Lost love is the most painful, soul-crushing, gut-wrenching love of all. Trust me, I know. I was lucky enough to find my soulmate, and then he was gone. Nicolo Francesco Mancini, do you take destiny to be your wedded wife? To live together in holy matrimony, to love her, to honor her, to comfort her, and to keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, for as long as you both shall live, asks the priest. I do, Nico answers, his lips lifting into a smile that melts me. That man was head over heels for destiny the moment he laid eyes on her. And do you, destiny, Luis Cardone, take Nicolo to be your husband? To live together in holy matrimony, to love him, to honor him, to comfort him, and to keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, for as long as you both shall live. Standing behind Destiny, holding her bouquet, I can't see her face, but the gleam in Nico's eyes as he focuses on her warms my heart. With all my heart, I do, she says. By the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and wife. Nico, you may kiss your bride. As they seal their love with a kiss, I can't ignore the ache throbbing deep in the cavern of my soul at the loss of my once-in-a-lifetime love. Chapter 1. Enzo. Enzo, is everything ready? They'll be starting soon. Tony's a worry wart. An anal retentive perfectionist, which I have to admit, I admire. I've worked for him for two years now, and he knows I have everything ready. The bar top is immaculate, all the glassware is spotless, and the shelves are fully stocked with high-end liquor, including a Macallan whiskey that was requested by the groom. I've made sure everything in my ability to control is perfect for the high-profile ceremony. Typical Southern California weather provides the perfect tonight for an outdoor wedding. Guests are seated in their white folding chairs, facing the baby's breath-covered arbor where the priest stands. Two men in tuxedos walk down the aisle and stand next to the priest. Damn, I know that guy. He starred in Don Mateo. Holy shit, is this his wedding? I better be on my game tonight. The prelude music from the harpist and two violinists stops and everyone turns their attention toward the center aisle. The trio begins playing canon in D and from behind the bar where I'm standing steps a woman with glowing Mediterranean skin and wavy cotton candy pink hair that flows down the center of her bare back. The backless floor-length dress she's wearing hugs every curve of, her, curve of her lush body and looks like a bottle of champagne that shimmers and sparkles with each step she takes. Like a moth to a flame, I can't take my eyes off her. When she reaches the arbor, she turns around, revealing the full effect of her tastefully sexy dress. Draped front, exposing luscious cleavage and is slid up to almost the top of her left thigh. She's temptation wrapped in silk and sequins. Fuck me. Shit. Rule number one, no fraternizing with the customers. Next comes the bride. Beautiful. More understated than her maid of honor. Matron of honor? Damn. I hope it's maid of honor. Reminder, rule number one. During the quick 30-minute ceremony, I watch every movement the pink-haired vixen makes. While the idea of love at first sight is a bunch of bullshit, I'm definitely captivated at first sight. Once the formalities are over, guests head my way for drinks and hand past hors d'oeuvres while the photographer takes pictures of the bride and groom and their families. The venue staff breaks down the ceremony area and builds a dance floor. For being a high profile wedding, I'm surprised to see so few guests. It looks like only about 50. Focusing my attention on serving the guests, I catch glimpses of the woman who I can't stop looking at. From here, it looks like she's giving directions to the photographer. Mm -hmm. She even took the camera from him at one point. Pretty damn bold. And kind of spunky, which I like. After the photo session, the wedding party makes their way to the bar. Finally, I get a closer look at the pink-haired beauty. Her eyes the color of melted dark chocolate. She walks up to the bar. Her sultry aura ripples through me. Placing her elbows on the edge of the bar top, she extends her forearms across the surface. I steal a quick glance down, grazing past her breasts at her hands. 
No wedding ring. Nice. It takes everything in me not to stare at her cleavage. She and the bride share a look without a word. A huge smile spreads across the maid of honor's face, lifting her cheeks. Her beautiful brown eyes twinkle. She's exquisite. The bride smiles and shakes her head. One. The maid of honor squeals and looks at me with a peek at my name tag before meeting my eyes. A potent, invisible attraction saturates the atmosphere, encapsulating only us. Held in the moment, her eyes oscillate between mine, telling me she feels it too. Two slippery nipples, please, Enzo, she says, her voice sultry and smooth, raising her sexy shoulder to her chin. She shoots me a beaming smile. Now I'm thinking about her nipples. Coming right up. I pause for her to tell me her name. Candy, the bride chimes in, breaking my gaze on Candy's eyes, and I'm Destiny. I shift my attention to the bride. Congratulations, Destiny. Two slippery nipples coming right up. I go about making the drinks, standing in front of them. It's hard not to listen to their conversation. Mrs. Destiny Machini, Candy squeals. Girl, I'm so happy for you. She hugs Destiny, then releases her. Um, I have a confession. A confession? Why don't I like the sound of this? She folds her arms across her chest. But you will. Mischief plays in the grin on Candy's lips. Out with it. I may have slightly orchestrated you and Nico meeting the night of your birthday. Mm -hmm. She pulls her smile back into a grimace as the muscles in her neck tighten. Destiny's posture drops as she jets her neck forward. Candace Alessandra Gamal. What? Her grimace retreats and is replaced with her beautiful smile again as she raises both shoulders. You are incorrigible, she laughs. And why am I just learning this now? Well, I figure that you can't be mad at me now. Candy raises her shoulders again and holds out her hands in surrender. I set the slippery nipple shots on white cocktail napkins in front of them. They raise their shot glasses toward each other and say in unison, Ride or die, then they clink their glasses and toss back the shots. More guests arrive at the bar, and I turn my attention to serving them. It's not long before the dance floor is built, and it's time for everyone to take their seats. Guest seating is arranged in a semicircle with a smaller table of four facing the semicircle. Down the center of the tables are simple, elegant garlands of vintage-looking roses with greens and baby's breath. White candles are tucked into the length of each garland. Once everyone is seated, the best man gives his toast. Glasses are raised, and he hands the microphone to Candy. She stands next to Destiny, addressing the guests. Hi, everyone. I'm Candy, and I'm Destiny's maid of honor and best friend. Turning toward Destiny, she reaches out for her hand. God answered my prayers for a sister when he brought your parents and you to be our neighbors. Being friends since we were five, we've been through so much together. From braces to bad perms, from pulling all nighter studying to dancing our asses off, from celebrating accomplishments to sobbing over breakups. She pauses from losses. They each tilt their head to the side and pull their lips into pain smiles, looking like they may burst into tears. Hmm. The instant she said it, her mood shifted. I get the sense she's referring to something deeper than lost shoes. Regaining her composure, Candy continues, to incredible celebrations like today. She returns her attention to the guests. I confess to Destiny today that I kind of played a little bit of a matchmaker when she and Nico first met. The crowd chuckles and she looks at the groom. And that's because I knew enough about him to know he's a good man and he'd treat my best friend the way she deserves to be treated. I've watched your love blossom and strengthen and I'm enamored by it. There's something indescribable about soulmate love. It's magical, unbreakable. Tonight, we're all here to honor you both and celebrate your love. She releases Destiny's hand, takes her champagne glass and raises it. To the bride and groom, wishing you endless years of love and happiness. Cheers. With that, the guests raise their glasses, shout cheers, and sit down for their meal. During dinner, people sporadically come to the bar to refresh their drinks. During lulls, I clean glasses and watch candy because I can't seem to stop myself. Bartending is the job that pays the bills between modeling gigs. With the industries I'm in, I see my share of hot women. They all pale in comparison to candy. It doesn't matter, though. The lifestyle I have doesn't lend itself well to a stable relationship. 
When I'm intimate with women, we both know it's a quick physical thing before we move on to our next gig. It's not like I get laid on every job I do. I just know when I hook up with someone, that's all it is. Besides, anytime I've tried to have a long-term relationship, they always ended up leaving me in the dirt. There was a time I wanted to find the right girl, get married, have kids, the whole nine yards, but I had my heart stomped on enough to know that I learned to leave before they could. Now, I don't even bother. After the wedding cake had been served, the bride and groom step onto the dance floor for their first dance. About halfway through the song, the DJ invites the maid of honor and best man to join them. He takes Candy in his arms and holds her close. Lucky bastard. The music shifts to club music and guests disperse to the dance floor and to the bar. The second Candy starts walking toward me with her long, sexy legs, alternately peeking out from the slit of her dress, a zap of electricity strikes my dick. Stepping up to the bar, she rests her elbows on the edge. Some of her pink mermaid long hair slides around her shoulders and hugs the side of her breast. My dick twitches. What can I get you? I ask. One Macallan and one chocolate martini, please. Ooh, rough night? She chuckles. No, they're for the bride and groom. Ah. I start making their drinks, glancing in her direction a few times. Her attention is fully on me. Here you go. I set the drinks in front of her. Can I get you something? I'll be back for mine, she smiles. What would you like? She pauses, staring directly into my eyes. Mm -hmm. Surprise me. No smile, no smirk, no flirtation. She walks away, leaving me rattled. This woman is so damn sexy. When she returns, I have a cocktail waiting for her. She sits on one of the three white leather bar stools we have on either side of the bar, taking the drink in her hand. She asks, what is it? Taste it first. See if you like it. I took a chance. If you don't like it, I'll make you something else. She takes the cherry stem in between her thumb and index finger. Gingerly placing the cherry into her mouth, she plucks off the stem, placing it on the cocktail napkin. The air scorches. Then she picks up the drink and takes a long sip from the tiny gold straw. Mmm. Tilting her head slightly, she sips again. Good choice. I've heard bartenders match drinks with personalities. You don't know me, so why a whiskey sour? Curiosity alight in her silky chocolate eyes, she looks up at me from under her long, dark lashes. Whiskey cocktail drinkers are a bit of a wild card. They tend to live in the moment and tell it like they see it. No bullshit. They can be both the life of the party and also be found deep in conversation tucked into a corner booth. They have a discerning palate, hence the whiskey. For you, the sour of the lemon and lime juices highlights your sassiness while the simple syrup enhances your sweet side. And the cherry, well, it just wouldn't be complete without a cherry on top. Our gazes tangle as she processes my interpretation. She gives me a nod with her sexy smile, then raises her glass toward me and takes another sip. Sliding off the bar stool, she returns to the head table and sets down her drink before going to the dance floor. This woman is feisty as shit, a force to be reckoned with. Reading the crowd, the DJ alternates between club music and slow songs. Between serving drinks and keeping the bar clean, I watch her dance. Damn, she knows how to move her body. The sun dips below the horizon, coloring the sky with remnants of orange, yellow, and red. The DJ shifts the mood as a slow song fills the air. Candy walks up to the bar and sits on the stool where she was earlier. One of your whiskey sours, please, she smiles, sending a wave of heat through me little vixen. I make the drink and set it in front of her. Not dancing with your date? My date? Her brows pinch together. The best man. She chuckles. No, he's not my date. He's Nico's brother and he's dancing with his wife. She points in their direction. No date? Her? Several guests step up to the bar. Excuse me, I say to her and tend to the few who are on my side while Jake tends to the rest on his side. The slow song ends and more people are ready for refills. While they keep me busy, Candy sits on the bar stool, sipping her drink and watching people dance. Another slow song comes on. The spurt of guests needing refills dwindles. Candy's gaze has moved above the dancing bodies to the stairs, to the stars in the clear night sky. The warm, gentle breeze tosses a few hairs around her face. On a chain around her neck hangs a thick silver ring with gold and silver. Gothic-like filigree. Lost with her thoughts, she slides the ring up and down her middle finger. It's too big for any of her delicate fingers. Whatever or whoever she's thinking about is a dark shadow looming over her spirit. 
Taking a penny out of my pocket, I slide it across the bar toward her. So as not to startle her, I keep my voice quiet. Pity for your thoughts? I ask, wiping a dry mar martini glass. Her trance broken, she turns her stool, setting sad eyes on me, sending the sadness beneath my skin. You look miles away. Her vibrant smile, I've seen most of the night, is gone, replaced by a weight she's struggling against to push up the corners of her lips. No, I'm here, she says softly, returning from miles away. I'm a good listener. It comes with the job. Being a traveling bartender is kind of like being a priest. People have a few drinks and confide in me, probably because they know they'll never see me again. I hear all kinds of secrets. Leaning closer, I quiet my voice. I'll keep yours safe, I promise. Her beautiful face lifts then falls as she casts down her eyes. Lifting her head, she takes a long sip of her drink. Sometimes the most wonderful celebrations are also reminders of those who are no longer here to celebrate with. Melancholy ridges the features of her face. Something in me yearns to take away her sadness. Just then, Destiny comes over and stands in front of her. When Candy looks up at her, tears well in her eyes as her brows pinch together. I know. It's all Destiny says, then cradles Candy's face into her chest. They release, and Destiny cups Candy's face in her hands. Then she takes Candy's hands and nods toward the dance floor. Come on. She says with a loving smile as she lightly tugs on her arm. Candy smiles back at her as she wipes a tear from her cheek. Standing, Candy hugs her and whispers into her ear. I watch her lips form the words, I love you. I don't know what just happened, but it's been gnawing on my heart. Candy's been a mysterious, sexy firecracker the whole time. Seeing her hurting made my heart ache. But why? I don't even know her, and I'll never see her after tonight. Unless I change that.